So, hi, I'm Gouda, and I'm here to show you the, uh, this thing. But, um, okay, let's get into it. So this is a kind of visual description of the thing. Yeah, the gang died coin. We're gonna go with that name. Um, until we get a better name. If you have a better name that you would like to suggest, um, you can yell at me at this subreddit, Waste Vote. Alright, let's get into this th mess of garbage we have here. Alright, so we have... This yellow box is a transaction. This counts as a uh, remainder with an account pairing. Um, so we have kind of like a defined bit size for all this stuff. So we can kind of calculate based on these numbers what the expected value should be. And from this we can kind of figure out if this is even possible to build from a machine standpoint. Um, so, you know, we have a flow chart that we can use to figure out how many times these operations would likely be run per second to figure out if a machine is going to even be capable of handling this garbage. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but, uh, you know, if if a machine could handle all this stuff, um, this might actually work. Who knows? I don't know. Um, so, let's get into it. <sighs> so, in our block example, we have um, a bunch of transactions, a bunch of blue blocks. A blue block is, um, was a defines a target of an old block. So whenever you forward transactions from an old block, you in your own block that you're making, you put a little blue cell in, and that cell encapsulates all the transactions that are being forwarded from that old block. So that's what this represents, uh, this chunk of thing right here. Um, so yeah, and then when you forward those transactions, you claim decay based on how, for how much forward in time they were pushed. So you can claim the decay remainder based on that. Um, and then on the bottom we have our writing data, which you use to uh, broadcast uh, votes and God, just whatever. You know, it's just extra data on the block that you can use to do whatever. The more of this you have in comparison to transactions, the less likely it is for your block to be uh, secured. So in a very, very high data rate network, uh, the more likely block to be secured is the one that has more data uh, relegated to transactions. So this, the size of this data section, this data portion of the block, is um, you know based on whatever you think might still be able to be pushed onto the network. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, it all makes sense. Um, so here's an ideal block map. This is like if you could draw it out in a very, very smooth manner. This is what it would kind of look like. You know, each block is receiving data from a couple different blocks. And, you know, the time goes forward. They're, all the data's being claimed. But it's just being pushed forward in time. Um, but realistically, it's going to look something like this, which is just garbage. Uh, you know, it's a big mess. Blocks are linking back to a whole bunch of things previously in time um, that are go very, very far back to claim the entire set of transactions, so every transaction that was ever produced will eventually get pushed forward in time. So all that stuff needs to get claimed eventually by blocks that are produced uh, in the current time frame. Uh, meanwhile, you might have some blocks that are, you know, have some double spending errors, uh, or double thieving errors, um, and then you might have some data, or you might have a block where it's being linked to a block that you don't have in memory yet. So this might just be a completely invalid block because these things that it's linking to actually don't exist and it's just faking it. Or um, uh, it could be a valid block and you just don't have these blocks memory yet. They just weren't broadcast to you yet. So if you receive something like this, you would have to go out to the network and request for you to be sent this block. And then if someone was able to send you this block, then you could promote them as a, a peer, peering host. Um, yeah, so, you know, you could have ways of incentivizing this stuff. Because it's valuable to have good memory of the block network. So, um, promoting peers that are very uh, gracious to the network, um, you know, it helps them and it also helps you. Because they can produce blocks that are more correct, that have uh, has a higher chance of um, not being rejected. Because they don't, because they have complete knowledge of the network, they are not going to be producing a block that is incorrect. Unless someone produces one after them. So, you know, that sort of stuff. 
Anyways, onto the flow chart. Uh, this is a big mess of things, uh, but let's just start with over here at block creation. So we're making a block. Um, let's make a block. So we start with an empty block. We put on a timestamp. We put on whatever writer data we want. So you know whatever things we want to include. That is not transaction based. We're just going to allocate that to the block beforehand. So then we're going to build a transaction heap and sort the heap by the decay available at the timestamp. So we're going to pull the highest transaction off of this heap. So this is just going to be a separate process that's going to be building this heap at all times. Um, so whenever you're pulling a transaction from it, you're getting the highest value transaction. So this is a greedy pull from the network. It's valuable because uh, you know the thing you're pulling off of the heap is considered the most valuable transaction that has been processed so far in time. Uh, yeah. Anyways, afterwards we get to check that transaction is valid, like uh, if it's already claimed, this is a database call to our database of all blocks. Uh, if it's already claimed, uh, what if it's claimed by a future block? If it is, we don't care, and we have the transaction to it. Um, and then we repeat the process until the block is full. Uh, if it's invalid, you repeat the process. If it's already claimed, you you know pull a different transaction. If it fail, you wait for more blocks to occur in memory. Um, so is block full? Yes. Uh, does block fit network requirements? So, um, if you're building this thing, there might be some type of predefined uh, format you have to go through to fit that specific network you're trying to launch this block onto. Um, so that could be kind of a problem. So you have to test if it fits that network's requirements. Uh, you know, because each one of these networks is going to be user generated, um, there is no way of figuring out exactly what these network requirements are. It's purely user defined or, I guess, network defined, or, I don't know, what would you call it if a bunch of people came together and just started changing their rules for their own specific uh, group? Whatever that is. Uh, anyways. Then, you've basically produced a block that is not secure yet, so after that, you want to mine the block to produce security for it, so it hashes into whatever is considered a correct hash for that specific network. Alright, so then you've received a block. Um, so then you can hash the block, and does it have sufficient security? Uh, if you don't, then you delete the block and demote the peer. If you somehow produce a block that you yourself don't want, um, and then you detect that, you should probably demote yourself because you've done a bad job of something. Uh, does block fit net requirements? Uh, no? Then you delete the block. Or delete the block and demote the peer. Um, if you don't receive a block that is not part of your network, you don't care about it. It's just a peer sending you garbage, so get rid of them. You don't want them around. Uh, so if it's yes, then you store the block in your database of all blocks. Uh, then you check the timestamp. Um, if it's in the future, you wait until it's the current time. You wait until enough time has passed for that timestamp to be equal to the current time, and then you broadcast to the network. If it's in the past, then you just broadcast it outright. So, you know, you're only broadcasting blocks that have already been, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're already, you're broadcasting blocks that have already passed in time, right? Although you could broadcast beforehand, but, uh, no one cares. So it's better to save data on your end and hope that someone else broadcasts it to whatever peer you're linked up to first. So you don't have to. Alright, so then you're going to use this big old database of blocks and somehow pull out a Reddit front page out of it. Um, yeah, good luck with that, but I think I figured out just an easy way to do this. So you pick a time, here, you got your regular time, you initialize some tables of assigned votes, your account totals, and your posts. So these are new tables. Um, and then you're going to uh, go to your database and get the next valid highest timestamp block. So uh, you pick a point in time. Um, if it's as far into the future as possible, then, uh, you know, you could consider all blocks that have been made. Um, you could pick a time in the past, and then you simply, uh, don't care about blocks that come after that point. So, you can just kind of shunt off big portions of the network. So then you parse the next transaction out of the block. Uh, you subtract the decay from your chosen time to the time it is currently. And then you add that transaction total to the account that owns that transaction. So you're grouping up all these transactions 
into one account so you know exactly how many coins the singular account owns because the, all their transactions that describe their account are just scattered across the entire network and you have no idea where they are. So just as you encounter them when you're processing this database, you're adding them into the uh, this table, right, and collecting them. So you do that until you run out of transactions. Uh, and then you parse the data for, you're going to parse writer data. So um, you're just going to parse this for messages. Um, if So do you have a correctly signed voting power statement? Uh, if you do, then you add it to the database of uh, signed votes. And a voting power statement would be like, I am posting, or like, I am allocating, like, you know, 100 million voting power, just whatever comical number you want, one or four or like three, maybe like 12 or like, you know, 8 billion, um, you know, whatever number you want. Uh, and then you're going to, yeah, read that off and add it to the signed vote database, right? So you have a signed vote that says that I'm allocating some amount of voting power of my account onto this post, whatever it is. Uh, so if it's not a voting power statement, then it must be a post, right? Alchemy oh, dog is back there. So if it's not a voting power statement, then it's something that can be voted on. Um, so it's like a post. So then you're going to parse this data out, uh, if it is a post, and you're going to add it to your list of posts. So these are the things you're actually going to view eventually. Um, and if it's not something you can vote on, then what? what is it? Why is it on the network? Maybe there's some custom thing that people are posting that they're sharing with each other that has nothing to do with you. Um, so just like, you know, erroneous data for you, but it might not be erroneous data for someone else who actually is using it for whatever thing, you know, might be like an encrypted message that can only be decoded by blah, 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 something, you know. Um, so if there is some type of custom rule set, then you can process that, uh, whatever with that custom rule set. Maybe it produces a new transaction out of it. Um, that you know you might care about from your custom software or like your custom descript descriptors of whatever the statement is uh, and then that creates new transactions for you to parse into this stuff uh, if it's not some custom statement then I have no idea what the hell it is and then you just parse for the next thing um, all right so that's how that works so this is gonna go through uh, take all the transactions out of a block uh, sum up all the account totals and eventually this is just gonna wear through a ton of blocks okay uh, somehow this is grabbing the next valid highest timestamp block this is a cop-out for describing this uh, there's probably gonna be some problem of making this work in a fast manner because it has to be processing a lot of these things uh, you know potentially like if you wanted to refresh this page you'd probably have to go through like a gigabyte of data at least uh, probably more, uh, you know, to give you an idea of how much data crunching is going to have to happen to make this work. Or maybe like even more, like maybe like a terabyte of data, who knows. Um, so if you... Okay, so after you've done that, you should have gone through and produced these uh, three tables, right? So then you're going to hit the refresh button on your page, right? Uh, so th reset all the vote counts on these posts to zero, and you unmark all these accounts, get the next largest account. Um, so grab the largest account out of this account table. Um, is the account banned or marked? Uh, if it is, then you get the next account. If it's not, then, uh, yeah, then you, we need to define this little thing. So you sum up all the voting power and the account coin total. So whatever that number is, and we're gonna produce some type of value that, like the voting normal. So this is gonna normalize how many coins per voting power your account uh, has. So after that, you're gonna pull the next voting statement out for this account, and then you're going to uh, calculate how many votes are available for that voting statement. So your votes are equal to statement power times your voting normal. 
and then you add the votes to the post. So as you go through all these accounts, uh, each individual post will eventually accrue all the votes that have been put into them over time, or over all the accounts. Okay, so you know that's pretty simple. Then you go to the, your post database and you copy the posts, or you copy the post database, you sort it, and then you just pull a post off the top and you put that on your screen. Uh, and then you just repeat that process until. Oh my god. You just repeat that process until you've got a screen full of posts. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think this might, this, this might work. I feel like this can kind of maybe work. Uh, yeah, so that kind of describes that. Uh, again, all the resources will be in the description below. Uh, don't consider this the final version. This is literally version one. I finished it today and I maybe looked over it for 30 minutes. Uh, it's going to take a lot more work to finish this thing, but uh, I, I assure you this probably actually works um, for doing what it's set out to do. So, zoom out. Man, that's really going slow here. So, yeah, the, the uh, decaying dag coin. It's uh, a thing. Steal it if you want. Uh, by me or whoever in the event they steal it. Steal it. Wink, wink. Um, so I don't have to bother with this anymore. Uh, so I'm good at now. We'll see you next time.